The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dispiation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to, set, to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the sw swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses at last, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough to eat, but here I am dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of the hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead, but has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of his servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, look, all these years I served you and yet not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up the property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf? He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> okay, truth in advertising. There is one takeaway from today's homily. And it is this, go to confession. Ideally with the faith community on Monday evening at 5.30, but if not then, please go within the next couple of weeks before Easter. It is a great Lenten practice. And I don't want to be judgmental, but my guess is that in our society, 
secular society these days, many of us haven't quite given ourselves uh, to doing very much of a spiritual nature during this uber spiritual season of Lent. And the Gospel of Luke helps my pitch. One of the main themes of the Gospel of Luke is the joy and thanksgiving that will well up in our hearts at discovering the mercy of God, especially when in his compassion he forgives our sins. Where do you fit in to the story of the prodigal son? Most of us are not very much like the younger son. I could be wrong, but I doubt if many of you are squandering your inheritance on a life of dispiation. Though you may enjoy your your evening cocktail and lack a certain custody of the eyes on the beach, uh, but you're still good church-going people. And even those who haven't been to church very much of late are decent people. I was delighted to welcome a few people at the mission and at Vivian Dubuque's funeral who hadn't darkened the door in a while. But they really are solid citizens compared to the young son in the gospel. Shoot, one of them isn't even a drinker, which would be the very foundation of living uh, a life of dispiation. No, most of us aren't radical sinners. But I would say that there are some elder brother genes in most of us. We're fairly faithful and dutiful. After all, we are here in church most weeks. And yet, we can be bound up in our own self righteousness. We may have our little sins. I lied. I gossiped. I cursed. I got angry. I drank too much. I was judgmental. But honestly, I'm not a great sinner. I mean, who of us would ever say to God our Father what the younger son said? I have sinned against heaven and against you, I no longer deserve to be called your child. We presume on God's love. We play games with God. We pick and choose how we will practice our faith. As Catholic cafeteria Catholics, we neither embrace God totally or reject God completely. And that's a dangerous line to walk. The father was patient and attentive to both sons, but his desire for them was that they would be all in, that they would be completely open to his love for them and accepting of that love. God's desire is for us to be all in. God's love, God's mercy is unconditional and somehow we still believe the evil one that we have to earn it or we believe the devil's lie that no matter how small our sins, we really don't deserve God's love and forgiveness. I'm not sure why it's so hard to accept forgiveness. I know it's not easy to accept the imperfection in ourselves. So I ask you what I must often ask myself. Why are you so hard on yourself. Whether it's God 
who whispers, your sins are forgiven you, or the priest who murmurs, I absolve you, or a friend who waves away our apologies, oh, forget it. We won't let it go. Perhaps forgiveness is so hard to accept because like love, it lays a burden on us. It demands a response. It asks us, God asks us, that we be all in. Without forgiveness, we could not be Christians. And still, we're so slow to forgive others, to forgive ourselves, to accept forgiveness. Perhaps it's simply time to turn to God and entrust ourselves to God's forgiveness in the sacrament of reconciliation. The prodigal reminds us that there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than the 99 righteous who need no repentance. This gospel suggests that grace is stronger than sin, that we who were lost in our own selfishness have been found, that we who are, were dead are alive again in God's love. Today is Laetari Sunday. I forgot to wear my pink. I'm pretty in pink. <laughs> but it's a Sunday of joy and rejoicing. So you can take your pick. You can stay outside of the confessional, aloof from the party, enjoying your anger, reveling in your righteousness, refusing to forgive or be forgiven. Or you can let go of yesterday's judgments and selfishness and sin and join the party. Celebrate God. Celebrate yourself. And celebrate your desire to be all in by humbly accepting God's mercy and forgiveness. Amen.